and we should be live over on YouTube. Let me try and get everything set up here so that um, we can get started. Let me make sure we are still live over on Facebook. Um, yes, we are. Okay. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Hopefully there's no echoing. Um, if anybody is on YouTube, if you could let me know if you hear any echoing, that would be wonderful. Over on Facebook, let me see where that's at. There we go. No. If there's anybody over on Facebook watching, if you could let me know if there's any echoing, that would be great. Okay, let's minimize these windows. And then hopefully I can see any chats questions that you may have. Hmm, it's not letting me do that where I can actually watch it. Okay, well, let's, let's try this again. And I may have to um, leave for a minute because my dog just came up here and if any of you have been online with me prior and you know how my um, dog loves to bark so I'm surprised she scooted up here so my chat box isn't working for Facebook so that I can see what is being said let me See if I can get that going. All right, that's for some reason that's not working tonight. All right, well, let's get started. This is the um, birch tree that I had created, um, not online, but I, I had just created that on my own. And that's what we wanted to kind of recreate. And I'm just going to set mine to the side. And this is where we left off. We had gone in, added branches, put in all of our shadows, and this is what we want to work on going in and lifting a lot of those shadows, lifting up some of the darks on those branches just to give it more life. Um, right now, it's very flat. It's not uh, three-dimensional. And that's what we want to do. We want to make it so it looks more like a real tree. It's more rounded. It has more depth to it. And it curves around. So in doing that, we're going to be using bleach and water. So let's get started. I created, just threw down the same colors that we had used in our tree. I have the OST Oast Blue Violet Yellow Ochre. And I want to play around with the different colors and how the bleach picks up the colors. Now this is very, very inexpensive watercolor paper um gosh i don't even know the brand to tell you but it's super super cheap it's not even um watercolor paper that has texture on the back side the only side that has any tooth to it is the front side of it so it's really super inexpensive 
um, I don't know. It's just, it's, I don't ever use it. I have no idea why I ever purchased it. I thought maybe I could just play around with it, but it is what it is. So we're going to just play with a little bit of bleach. Now, this is not the container that, of course, the bleach comes in. I just put it in spray bottles that are old bottles that are empty. This is straight bleach in here. This is not a mixture of bleach and water. This is an inexpensive brand that I picked up from Walmart. I think it's probably their brand, their great value brand. But when I bought it, it was when the pandemic was going on and there was um, really very little on the shelves for sanitizing. And of course the bleach, people were using it to sanitize with. So the only bleach that they had that was the inexpensive bleach was highly concentrated bleach. So this is extremely strong. Now, if it was just regular household bleach that you buy, not concentrated, I always start off with a 50-50 ratio. But I've yet to really figure out with this bleach what the ratio is. It's probably maybe not even a quarter bleach to three quarters water. So that's why I did this because I want to just play a little bit, excuse me, play a little bit and just kind of see what this is going to do if it's going to lift it. But first what I want to do, and I don't know how it's going to react on this cheap paper. Um, first, I want to see if this sprayer still works. And to see if this is going to lift with just the straight water. And when you do that, always be careful that you're not pointing the nozzle at your face when you spray it. I cannot emphasize that enough. Be extremely careful when you spritz bleach that you're spraying away from your face. And as you can see, it is picking it up, which is very good. And you can see where it's getting that off color. I love that color. I love that where it leaves that kind of um, stained look, but it's more of a yellow look. And on this tree, that's what I have a lot of. So that makes me really happy on this cheap piece of paper that that's working on these colors. So what I do want to do is I'm going to take the top off of this bleach. And I have these little mixing cups that I actually use these for um, resin. And I just want to put, oh, not even a millimeter. I guess that's one millimeter of bleach. I'm going to put the top back on on my bleach so I'm not spilling it. I have my spray bottle with water. And I'm going to add I'm trying to come up with where it's about a quarter bleach to three quarters water. Now, if you're using regular household bleach, again, what you want to do is go start off 50-50. 50% bleach to 50% water. That's the best way to start off with regular household bleach. This is concentrated, highly concentrated bleach. 
So I have these old brushes that are very inexpensive. I picked them up at Target. They were for like $5 for a set of six brushes. They're all synthetic. But they seem to work really good with bleach and water. I use them over and over again. It hasn't destroyed the bristles. I don't want to use my good expensive brushes. So um, again, be careful with your brushes. Brushes are expensive. I have an old towel handy. And now I'm going in and this is as I said, I tried to get it as close to a quarter of the concentrated bleach to three quarters of the um, of water. And I'm trying to see how this is going to lift. So that's, it's lifting pretty good. Hopefully you can see that. Now that's gone. I went over that about three times. So if I want to take it back to that yellow, I'm going to need to really strengthen the bleach that I'm using. If this was straight bleach, this is, what would you say, one to three, um, one millimeter to three millimeters of water. And it's still leaving that blue. It's still leaving a little of the purple. The yellow, it's taking it back to pretty much the yellow of the paper, the white of the paper. Again, this is that cheap paper. My good Stonehenge Aqua paper that I use is going to react a little differently, but that's okay. So we're just getting an idea of how this is going to react. Now, I have this container that I've just let bleach dry in, and I, it's all crystallized. I don't know if you can see those crystals and I'm just going to take a piece of that out and just add it to that water and it broke before I got it in just to strengthen that percentage just a little bit more again you can always go back in and add more water but what I did is I added more bleach. I could have used my liquid bleach. That would have worked fine too. But I just have where I've dumped bleach into this plastic cup and it's crystallized and I just trying to use those up. So now let's try with a little more bleach. And you can see that's lighting it, lightening it up a little more. little faster and again it's heavier concentrated here with the color so if we go over here and lift this is closer to the what this is so it again it's lifting a little better so on this paper I would want to use a higher ratio of bleach to water. Instead of one to three, I would probably boost that up just a little bit more bleach so I could get a little more of the color off. Now again, your blues and your purples are staining colors. So they're harder to pick up than the yellows and the lighter reds. 
If you go back in and you watch, I do have a video where we made swatches of each of the colors of Brush O. And I did the bleach test and a test with Melton showing how they were picked up. I always suggest people to do that. It really helps out knowing what kind of results you're going to get with your regular bleach or the product called Melton just to see you know how it's going to react. So um, let's see. All right. Let's start working on our tree. And again, we used a palette knife to create all of the branches. It's a number one palette knife. We used that to draw the colors across. We used it to create our branches. So I want to carry through and use a palette knife to do a lot of the lifting. If it's not picking up, I'm not getting it smooth enough, I may go in with this cheap brush. This is a Robert Simons Sapphire brush, a 14, number 14 size. Again, it's all synthetic hair, so it's, bleach isn't going to be that hard on it. I have a little thicker, this is a number eight of the same brand as this littler brush. These are all synthetic, very inexpensive brushes, but they do hold the tips. So they're, they're decent brushes for what I paid for them. And again, I picked these up. They were a set of, I don't know, five or six brushes. They were only five, six dollars and they were at Target. So let's start. Now on some of these branches, I want to lift, and I don't want just straight lines, but I want to lift some of that color in those branches just to lighten those up a little bit, just to give them a little more depth. And this was done on the Stonehenge Aqua watercolor paper, 140 pound. It's cold press, so it has a little bit of tooth to it. It's not hot press, which is pretty smooth. You can see I'm just kind of going in and picking up, lifting up some of those colors. In some places, almost too much. Probably go back in and add a little more color to those, probably on this paper. I've gotten um, the Stonehenge Aqua Paper. I have my bleach a little bit strong. So I'm going to add just a dab more water. And this is something you're going to need to do is just play around and see how yours reacts. And on the paper that you're using. Oops. Of course, I picked a brush up out of habit. Be sure if you're over on Facebook, be sure to 
follow the Fine Art Cafe Academy and subscribe to us. If you're on Facebook, be sure to um, follow us there. And I'm going in and just trying to pick up some of these colors. Now my light is coming from this direction. So I want more shadow on this side than I do on this side. So I want to lift up a little more of that color And I believe what you're looking at would be on the left hand side for me it's on the right hand side because it's a mirrored image of the actual painting what you're watching Now, a lot of times people will ask, what does the bleach do to the paper? I've never had a problem with any of uh, the paintings that I've done in almost all of my brush out paintings. I go in and I'll lift with bleach and water, but I use rag, 100% cotton, rag paper stonehenge aqua is a rag paper so i'm not sure if that's the reason i've never had any issues with it if anybody has had issues with using bleach on your paper let me know because i would love to know what the results are on another type of paper you can see how this is really starting to come to life versus down here at the bottom where I've not applied any bleach. This is very um, drab looking, very flat. This is starting to pick up and have more dimension. It's giving more depth because now it's starting to look like the tree is actually a little more rounded. And that's what the fun is. You can actually take bleach and water and just sculpture a painting from it. You can lift areas, go back in, darken them up. I don't want to get this on my top. But that's what makes brush and using bleach and water so much fun, at least for me. So I want to work on the other side now, and I don't think I want it to lift white the same so I'm going to add even more water because I don't want it to lift quite as much but I do want to lift some of that. And I'm going to tilt my paper a little bit. Trying to kind of go in a rounded motion. And I love this. Where look how organic this is looking.
Now the reason I'm not worried about down here or up at the top, I take a full size piece of Stonehenge Aqua paper, which is 22 by 30. And I quarter that. And in doing that, then my paper is 11 by 15. So I always have extra because it's when I go to mat it and frame a painting as I have that um, inch. A mat fits in a, um, a painting, excuse me. It's hard to, to work and to um, talk at the same time sometimes. A mat fits an 11 by 14 painting and then there's like a quarter inch around that um, is inside of the mat. I don't think I'm explaining myself really the correct way, but the inside of the mat is just a hair smaller than the 11 by 14. So that's why it gives me the good inch that I can play with lengthwise. With, I only have that quarter inch. So I knew, know I have to take my, pa my paintings out as far to the edge as I want them because I don't have much room to play around with a painting when I'm at it. Even when I put it on a cradle board, which is would be the cradle boards that I buy are 11 by 14 because most of my paintings are 11 by 14, 11 by 15. Um, that way I don't have much of an edge to trim off. Just a little bit of an edge for the, the width. The length of it, I have that inch to play with. I hope that makes sense. And what I was doing was what not really paying attention as I was talking to you, and I didn't get it right up to the edge. So I'm getting a line there and I'm just kind of going in and just kind of um, even going over the edge a little bit with my bleach and water. If it fuzzes out, that's perfectly fine. Trees have the, all of the little nooks and crannies on them and you know, they're not a perfect straight line on any tree. That looks so much better than the original when we started. This branch comes out from here, so I want to kind of have more of it coming out and a little lighter up here. The same with this one. And I'm not worried about these spots in it because I think that's very organic looking and it's I like that. I really like those those spots and I'm not going to do anything to them. Now usually on branches when they they grow, they'll be shadowed underneath. So I'm going to leave some darks there on a lot of those branches. I can go back in and I can add more darks if I need to. I want to break up these hard lines here. 
where that branch is coming out of the front of the tree just to have it look a little more organic. Again, not a real fan of these hard lines, so I'm just kind of going in with my palette knife kind of spreading that out a little bit, wanting it to bleach out, not be totally straight. So I'm really, really liking this. I want to lighten up some of these branches that are here. just to give them a little more definition. Now what you can do even is, and this might not work because I do have quite a bit of water, but you could run a branch out and have it more in just a white branch going up through those leaves. And let's pull one in off of this tree right here, this branch. Just to add a little more character. Nobody's really going to notice those, but it just helps add character definition to your tree. character to those branches. I think what I'm going to do too is drop some drips of bleach if I can get it to, to drop a few into those areas that I spritzed and added water to and I don't, whoops, I don't want them perfectly round. So I'm just going to kind of scrunch those up a little bit with my towel. I don't want really hard dots within that tree. So that's pretty much how I go in. And I lift up the color. What I'll do then, and I'll just kind of kind of talk through this because I don't want to um, start laying color in because it will bleach up. If this was dry, I might go in and darken some of these areas up just to pull in some color. Let's see. This isn't this is probably going to bleach out as fast as I put it in. Um, I left my pot of water downstairs. So just going to spritz some water here. And uh, I guess I'll go ahead and, yeah, I use have, that's full of bleach. So what I'm trying to do is come up with a brush that if I get a little bit of bleach on it, it's not going to kill it. So if I want to go in and darken some of those areas, and we're going to see how much that bleaches out with all the bleach that's on there. And on a birch tree, they kind of get the lines that, you know, kind of come across. So that's fine if those lines kind of bleach out, stay in a little bit. Um, you know, that's, that's great. And what happened down here 
is a dry area where there wasn't any bleach that I used running that over. So it actually just kind of did a dry brush effect. And you can see it's really lightening up. And I'm just kind of dabbing around to add a little bit of that color. I'm going to use a little bit of the Oast Blue. And it's OST Blue. And again, if I get too much, I can always go back in when it dries, bleach it out a little bit more. I think I like that purple a little more along there. Adding a little more of my violet. Darkening up underneath those branches that come out because they are in shadow. If I get too much on my brush, I dab it off on my towel. I'm going around some of the lighter areas and I wish I had my water bucket here just to add a little water lead them out Gertie, no. Excuse me a minute while I get my dog to stop barking, and I will be right back. There, I'm back again. Sorry about that. But she is such a barker. She's a St. Bernadoodle. She is St. Bernard and Poodle. And she is just such a character, but she loves to bark. I'm really liking this tree. And I'm using a little more of the violet than I am the Oast Blue because I want this side darker than this side. Again, the sun is coming from this direction. My light is coming from this direction. So the side of this tree would have less shadow than this side. Now one of the things I do want to do is I want to add a little bit of the, whoops, that's Oast Yellow Ochre. I want to brown it up a little bit. And what happens when you mix purple and yellow, you get more of a brown. 
and I just want to darken that up so that it's more of that grayish, that darker color. So I'm getting a little more richness to it. A little more darker um, shadow on this side. I'm really liking this tree. If you add blue to the mixture, the yellow ochre, what happens? You get more of a green than you have of the that um, grayish color because you're mixing yellow and, and blue, which of course makes green. When you're mixing complementary colors, colors across from the color wheel, you're getting your gray colors. Hi Deb, um, your doodle used to bark a lot too, drove you crazy, oh my gosh. Mine is such a barker. She's just, I love her to death, but she is such a barker. So now here's the other thing. When um, a tree is in the woods, even though you're not seeing a lot of trees around, you're going to get shadows. So you're going to get branches that are casting a shadow on the trunk of this tree. So you can go in and add some lines that would be like a shadow of a, a tree coming in. I missed my bucket of water. And again, you're not getting the true colors because there's the paper is so saturated with bleach and water that you're not, you know, it's bleaching out a lot of that color that we laid down because there is so much. Um, the paper is just saturated the tree with bleach and water. So anyway, you kind of get an idea of how that'll look going in and darking some of those areas throwing some branches in, you know, shadows in. I don't like that. So we'll go in and go back with some bleach. It's not going to react quite the same because the paper is wet, but it's going to, you know, lighten up some of those areas that we, we added. And this is what I would do. I would just keep going back in, adding color, bleaching out areas until I get the tree to look exactly the way that I envisioned it, that I hoped it would turn out. And again, I'm lightening up because it bled over some in these areas, just lightening it up a little bit. But you can see how the tree is starting to come to life versus what we started off with. When we started off, it was just kind of a big blob of color that it all mixed together into really kind of a, a gray, icky color. And now you're getting your definition, you're getting your light down the center, making the tree look like it is rounder. Again, our light source is coming from this direction. So our shadow is lighter on the, light, the side, the light source is coming. 
it's darker on the shadowed side. So, I don't know, what are you guys thinking? Debbie, are you liking the tree? I know it's got to dry. It has to um, really um, kind of all meld together. What I'll do is I'll go in as I have on this tree and once it's dry, add a little more of the yellow, go back in, do a little more bleaching and just keep at it until I find, you know, what I like, how I like the tree. So do we have any comments? Let me go over onto Facebook while well, I'm just kind of letting this dry a little bit. I don't see any um, comments over on, on Facebook. And uh, Debbie, okay. Yes, absolutely. Looks like a tree. Good. I'm always happy when it looks like a tree. Um, we've been on for about 48 minutes, and there's not a lot I can do more for this until it, it kind of really dries. I could add a little more of my... my um, oast yellow if I wanted. But what I don't want it to do and everything's wet, I don't want it to mix together with the colors and make more of that mud or that, that kind of um, greenish color because it's mixing in with my, um, with the blues and the purples on the page. And again, it's going to continue bleeding out because of the bleach that's on the paper. But that's not too bad. Just kind of going in, dry brushing. That's not too bad. So... I hope this has helped. I hope this has shown how I go in and I use bleach and water. Let's pull this back over while this kind of dries. Again, this is that very inexpensive paper. You can see with what I did if you came on late is I mixed one part bleach to three parts water. This is heavy concentrated bleach so it's not the normal house bleach that you would buy um, again I got this during the pandemic and bleach was kind of hard to come by so it's very concentrated and um, yeah Debbie said she definitely it has to dry that tree has to dry and you prefer to let it dry naturally I do too I'm not a big fan of taking a hair dryer to brush out I think it kind of dulls it out for some reason I'm not sure why but I think it, it kind of does that I don't know Debbie do you find that too um, I just I don't know I just I like to let them dry naturally too but here I sprayed it, you know, give it a spritz with just pure bleach with my bleach in my spray bottle. Again, always be careful. If you're going to use this in a spray bottle, bleach in a spray bottle, never point it at your face. Always make sure you're pointing it away. I cannot emphasize that enough. Put it in a container and mix it. If it's normal bleach, mix it half to half water half water half bleach if it's this concentrated bleach you're going to have to play with it you're going to have to kind of see what mixture works best for you and what the results are that you want again this is that bleach and i hope you can see how it's i poured some in with water 
and how it crystallized after the water evaporated. It's really odd bleach because it's so concentrated. So play with the bleach. And oh yeah, Debbie, you say it dulls it. I think so too. I really do think that when you you dry it with a hair dryer, for some reason it does dull the brush out. So I always just kind of walk away. And you know what? Here's the other thing I've always found. Walking away really helps a painting. If I'm staying and I'm working and I'm messing and I'm playing with it like I did with this because you're online, I wanted to demonstrate. I kept going in with the color, with that yellow color, and it's still wet with bleach. It's getting overworked. I didn't walk away. If I wasn't online and I wasn't doing this live, I would have gotten up, walked away, come back to it again tomorrow after this dries. Once your bleach dries, you can go in and lay colors back in. It doesn't affect those colors if it's dried for some reason. It's the craziest thing. It's like the bleach isn't there. It may break down a little bit of the sizing on your paper, and you may not have a, a hard line when you add color, but that's okay. I like that look. Okay, Debbie says it usually has more than one painting to work. Oh, she, yeah, I do too. I'll, I, a lot of times I'll have several paintings going at one time. But even there, I find that walking away really helps me. It helps me from overworking a painting. And um, Debbie over on Facebook, or excuse me, Debbie over on YouTube says that the hair dryer, you think it draws watercolors too. It probably does, but a lot of people do that. Now, George, the, the orangutan that I did, I'm going to be doing a workshop on Monday. And the workshop runs from 9 to 4. And normally to do a painting like that, that painting takes me, oh, two, three, four days to finally complete it because I walk away, let it sit overnight. They're not going to have that opportunity. So they're going to have to use a hair dryer to dry their paintings in between times. So I'm waiting to see if they're going to notice the difference. I will notice the difference on the paintings that compared to my George where I walked away. I wanna see if they can see the difference too. But when I do a workshop, it's really teaching somebody the techniques, the same as when I'm doing a live. It's showing you the techniques of how I create a painting, how I created this tree. Do I like this tree better than I did originally than this tree? Yes. I dried in between this process, in between the steps. I was freer because I wasn't online and I just kind of get lost in a painting. This one We'll see what it looks like when it dries. This one is straighter. I did kind of branch it out and added a little more to it um, because it was so straight, so rigid. But I think that, I know, and I don't, it's not that I think, I know that's because I'm online, I'm trying to make sure I'm showing you, I'm talking at the same time, and I'm not getting lost in the painting. If I was getting lost in the painting, I would totally stop talking. So there's a big difference in when somebody's demonstrating. When I'm doing that workshop on Monday, it's going to be the same thing, because I'm gonna show them what to do, they'll go back to their seats, and then they'll do their own. So kind of, is going to be fun to watch 
because that George is very, very free, just kind of, you know, throwing colors down. And that's going to be hard for some of the people in the workshop. I know it's going to be hard for a few of them, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun and everybody's are going to be different. If I was doing this not live, they still would not look the same. I can never have the same painting turn out exactly alike. And that's what Deb just over on YouTube said. You can do the same painting, but each time is different. And it is a good thing because they do have their own character. I also think your mood, how you're feeling, the type of music. There's so many variables that go into how a painting is turning out and how free you are when you're painting. If you haven't signed up for the Fine Art Cafe newsletter, please do. We have a series right now within the newsletter and it goes out once a week. And I talk about that. I talk about how music influences a painting, how, um, how your feeling influences a painting. If you're not, you know, healthy, there's so many variables I believe that go into how a painting turns out, how free you are, how you can get lost into um, a painting when you're creating it. So anyway, that brings us up to about an hour. I'm so happy that you got to tune in and watch live and watch how I went in and laid the bleach in. I'll probably play around with this a little bit more, let it dry. I will post it on the Brush O Fun group on Facebook. If you're not a member of Brush O Fun, please go over to Facebook, do a search for Brush O, just like the Brush O that you use, B R U S H O, Fun, F U N. Join the group. It's a wonderful group of people. There, we have novice beginners, um, they're just such a great group of people. They love to share, they love to um, help each other out. We post a lot of different events in there. We have a monthly challenge for the banner. We have a What Is It Wednesday that is so much fun that people participate in. We have a photo that's posted on Mondays that if you want to paint, you can paint that. It's just it's such a good group of people. If you're on Facebook, follow us, like us, the Fine Art Cafe Academy. If you're on YouTube, um, do what you got to do on YouTube. Um, what is, subscribe. That's what I'm trying to think. Subscribe to the channel and then you'll get notice um, of when we're on. So again, thank you everybody for watching as I finished up this tree. After it dries, I'll probably just play around a little bit more. I'll definitely post it over in the Brush O Fun group. So everybody have a wonderful upcoming weekend. Have a good evening. Hugs to all. Everyone stay healthy and thank you so much for tuning in. It's been so much fun. Have a good evening. Bye everybody.